Hi, I'm Nico. Welcome back to the channel. Second video in a row about black and white photography. Uh, in the previous one, I told you to uh, expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights. In this one, we're gonna concentrate on um, exposing black and white film. Uh, there's two components to exposure. It's the speed at which you rate your film, also known as your ISO rating or your EV rating. Uh, I think I will call it speed going forward. And the metering of the scene. How do you meter a scene? Those are the two things that make up your exposure. This is my uh, third or fourth time recording this video and now I know that the only way I'm gonna get through this and keep it at a digestible length is if I uh, do not go on rants about what uh, everybody in my opinion is doing wrong and all the bad advice or the simply wrong information that gets propagated online. So I'm gonna keep focused on my uh, process and I won't uh, say anything about the stuff that uh, I think is wrong. So just know this, if I don't mention a tool that you're using or uh, a technique that you're practicing, it's because I'm very skeptical of it. But I won't get into it, I will leave you alone. Let's go. So first off is uh, rating your film. Uh, I think th that black and white film is fluid in its speed. Uh, I don't take the printed speed as a gospel, the ISO rating, uh, but I don't uh, either think that you always have to pull your films to get maximum dynamic range. I think it's very fluid, um, and if I had to have a rule that's uh, easily quotable, it would be this. Rate your film at the fastest speed that can still capture all the information you want in the scene. So, what does that mean? Uh, as you rate your film faster and faster, let's take the example of a Tri-X 400, uh, you can expose it, uh, you can rate it at 200 ISO or even 100 ISO, and then uh, shorten your development times. Uh, you get all those stops of dynamic range if you do that. And as you uh, expose that Tri-X, as you rate it faster and faster, you rate it at 400 instead, or 800 or 1600, um, your dynamic range will uh, compress. Your negatives will be uh, contrastier and contrastier because as you uh, rate it faster and faster, you're gonna start uh, losing details in the shadows because you're not feeding the film with enough uh, light at capture. We've been over this in the previous video. And because you're gonna develop longer and longer to compensate, uh, you're gonna start clipping your highlights uh, earlier and earlier. So the faster you rate your film, the more contrast the negative has, the least dynamic range you can capture. But thankfully, in the real world, there's uh, much less dynamic range than uh, people on the internet would have you believe. Um, so I say, don't be afraid of pushing your film, don't be afraid of using faster speeds, because you don't need 12 or 13 stops of dynamic range in day-to-day -day photography. Let's take an example. This scene, in my estimation, has two stops of dynamic range. There's one um, zone of exposure, and that's the entire picture. It's getting the same amount of light from our light source, which is sunlight, very, very, very diffused by clouds. And it's 95% of the picture. And the only place in the picture that the sunlight diffused by clouds is not reaching with the same intensity is that little corner in the middle where the two ramps meet, because the ramps are uh, cutting off uh, light coming from the back of the picture. So it's only getting maybe 25% of the light that the rest of the picture is getting. So that would that means in my estimation, it, it meters two stops lower than the rest of the pictures. So I have a two stop dynamic range. So why would I pull my Tri-X or why would I even get uh, stuck with a box speed when I know that there's so little dynamic range in my picture that 1600 ISO would capture it fine. If I, uh, I'm, I'm standing on the, on the roof of a public uh, monument in Oslo, uh, it's very icy on the ground, I'm, I'm walking with great care, I did not bring a tripod, but I'm shooting medium format, I need f11 for the depth of field of the picture to work, I want a sharp foreground, middle ground and background, and this is Scandinavia, it's a winter day, it's foggy, I have no light in terms of intensity. So can I capture this at uh, ISO 200 and held? Uh, no, I can't. Can I do it at ISO 400? No, I can't. ISO 1600, now I have a fighting chance. 
So in that case, to me, Tri X is a 1600 ISO film because it's the fastest speed that still captures the dynamic range I need for that picture to work. There is another thing that uh, goes up as you rate your film faster and faster, and it's grain. But I'll tell you right away, I don't care. First of all, we're shooting film, we shouldn't be afraid of grain. Um, but if you try to have control over the grain in the image, guess when that happens? It's when you choose your formats and your film, not when you choose what speed to use. If you already decided on small formats with a little Nikon or Leica, and you decided on Tri-X, which is a traditional grain film, that's when you made your grain decision, not on the field when you decide to expose that Tri-X at uh, 400 or 3200. If you wanted less grain, maybe try shooting a T-Max 100 instead, or try shooting it in a medium format camera instead. That, those are the decisions that really matter for your grain, not the difference between shooting something at uh, box speed or push to one stop, it makes zero difference. So now that you know how to rate your film, uh, how do you meter? The general rule is to meter for open shadow. Um, picture yourself, you're in the desert, there are no buildings around, it's completely flat. Uh, and you just have the sun, 45 degrees up in the sky. What is open shadow? It's any area that is not lit by the sun, it's not lit by your light source but it's getting the most light after that. It's the second most lit area of the picture. So in the desert example, if I'm standing here and the sun is to my back at 45 degrees, open shadow is the area in my shadow, the area that doesn't see the sun, but is lit by the entire sky in front of me and uh, the light reflecting off the sand. It's the area that gets the most light after, of course, areas that are in direct sunlight. And then there would be deep shadows. If I turn my back to the sun and I look under my jacket here, this would be deep shadow because this would not see the sun. It would not see most of the sky and sand. It would see only a 25 degree angle of sky. So it would get even less light. I'm not metering for deep shadows. I'm metering for open shadows. So for example, in that picture, it's, uh, it's very simple. Uh, this is lit by direct sunlight. So what is open shadow is just turning your back to the sun. Uh, the side of the house that is not lit by the sun, but is lit by the snow on the ground and the whole sky, that is open shadows and that's where I meter. Here's an interesting one to see if you understand. Um, where do I meter in this picture? This one is fun because there is no open shadow in the picture inside the frame. Uh, the entire frame here is lit by direct sunlight, except the inside of the box which is deep shadows, gets almost no light, and the rim under the um, roof of the box, um, which I guess could be uh, construed as open shadow, but because the wall, the front wall of the box is there, it's not getting light from a whole 180 degrees from that side, so it's not quite open shadow either. Uh, how did I meter this? Uh, standing right where I was, at camera position, I turned my back to the sun and metered a uh, looking up 45 degrees. So even though there is no open shadows in the picture being represented, uh, this is still the, the light level that I meter for. And doing that, you see that my uh, snow in the background turned out uh, white with detail. Uh, I don't know if you'll still see it on YouTube, the darkest shadow area inside the box uh, turns out black with detail. So all my values are in the right place even though I'm metering for a light level that doesn't really exist in my picture, but it's the correct uh, level to expose for. Uh, another sunny, contrasty one. For the record, I uh, rated my film that day. It's a Delta 400 rated at 1000 ISO. As you can see, I rate it at the fastest speed that it will go and still capture the important information in the scene. Am I capturing detail in the dark asphalt underneath the cars? No, I'm not, but I don't care. I'm not a technician in the lab. I'm not trying to make a point on the internet about the dynamic range of the film. I'm an artist trying to um, convey a feeling through a photograph. I don't need detail in that area. I don't need detail uh, in the engine compartment of the car behind the tire. Where I need detail is on the facade of the house and uh, in, the, in the open shadows. So where did I met, met meter here? It's, uh, it's a tricky one. <clears throat> I metered right here 
on that little puddle of light on the car. It's not in the shadow, but it's not also in direct sunlight because uh, sunlight is going through a tree with many leaves, as you can see in the, uh, the shadow shapes. Uh, this cuts off a lot of light. So this is my area that gets the second most light after direct sunlight. I'm probably getting like two stops less than the facade of the house is getting when I meet her for a puddle of light that's going through Poodle? A puzzle. A puddle of light that's going through uh, a tree. I'm calling it open shadow because that's the, um, that's the concept, but really it's whatever area of the picture is getting the most light after the direct main light. So you may be starting to notice something is that I don't look at subject tonality at all. I don't care the color of the car or the color of the house, but I break the light down the way a studio photographer would. I'm looking at the source. Okay, I have one main light, and then what area gets the second most light, it's that one. Uh, I, have a, I have a rather extensive studio background. I went to photo school. That's where I really learned to read light. So I relate to light uh, the way a studio photographer does. And it, it means looking at the source, not looking at the subject the way a landscape photographer would. So I think it's an interesting uh, exercise for you if you want to go out and look at things and try to break down the light source. So for that picture, I have three light zones. I have direct sunlight, that's the facade of the house. I have uh, sunlight filtered through a tree, that's where I meet her, that's uh, the foreground. I have semi-open shadows, because that street is a busy street with buildings on both sides, so I wouldn't really call the middle of the road open shadow. And, and then actually I have deep shadows, which is underneath the cars and inside the cars, which I don't care about. So if you break a scene down from that, like that, in those four zones, and then um, expose for the second brightest zone. If I was interested in, if I was like a lab technician or writing an article for a photo magazine about Delta 400, uh, I could absolutely have gotten the shadow detail. Uh, all I had to do was uh, rate it at 400 or 200 instead of 1000, and uh, still expose for the same place. That doesn't change, I still meter for my open shadow, for my second brightest zone, then the deepest shadow would have been readable. Little uh, pop quiz for you guys. So I'll just describe the scene in case it's not obvious. I'm, I'm standing under a roof on the open ground floor. I think this was an old garage turned into a bar. So I am under a roof and uh, in front of me, in the background of the picture is uh, the street, uh, which is lit uh, on an overcast day. So where do you meet her? You don't meter for the street, because that's the brightest part of the image, that's what's getting the most light. You're metering for the open shadows of that scene, which is uh, in the middle of the table. That's the part that's getting the most light after the street. That's the part that's being lit by reflected uh, light off of that uh, white facade you see in the background. It also happens that it's the main motive of the picture, it's my subject, this ashtray on this very dirty table, so it's convenient <laughs> that I'll get the best detail reproduction. Uh, where my main subject is, but that's not why I meet her there. I meet her there because in terms of uh, light values, it's the it's the part that represents the open shadow. As you can see, it makes a pleasing picture. Everything is reproduced well. The street is not blown. And my deepest shadows uh, at the very foreground underneath the bench are lost, but I don't care about that. I don't want your eye to go there anyway. Uh, the most eagle-eyed uh, among you would have noticed that this is actually color film turned into black and white. And... Um, yeah, the rule is the same for color film, by the way, because it's uh, color negative is basically a black and white negative plus a few layers of colors. So the same, I expose that the same way. A uh, little pop quiz, uh, where do you meter that scene? Well, we've seen that uh, right before. Um, you meter in the puddle of lights through the shadow of that tree. Here's a contrasty picture. So <clears throat> imagine I'm shooting black and white film. I'm probably gonna rate it at box speed or a little slower to capture all that range of contrast from the deepest shadow on the right to that very white wall on the left. Uh, but where do I meter? I meter here, underneath that little rooftop. This is the area that doesn't get direct sunlight, but it gets lit by a lot of the sky and it gets lit by that white building uh, reflecting back. So it's the area that gets the most light after direct sunlight. It's the open shadow. Okay, and the last one to really drill the point. Um, where would you meter that scene? I'll just tell you that this is in uh, a backyard. So this is surrounded by buildings. You can see the one in the background. It's uh, three stories high. 
So it's surrounded by buildings this high uh, on 360 degrees and it's a very gray overcast day. Where do you meter? So the answer, uh, I metered at ground level and pointing my light up. Because uh, the top of our motif, the, the rooftop of that like silhouetted house, uh, gets more light than the bottom. Because it's surrounded by uh, three-story high buildings, the top sees a lot of the sky. But as you go down, it sees less and less of the sky because of uh, the buildings around that cuts it. So the part of that picture that uh, that gets the, the most light is the tip of that little house silhouette and the part that gets the most light is probably at the base of that sandbox so open shadow it would be standing in the middle of that path at ground level and just pointing your uh, light meter up as you can see uh, i get a really nice uh, reproduction with the snow that goes white but doesn't uh, blow still keep details and the darkest part of that image the base of that sandbox is uh, dark but with a lot of details too. In terms of rating the film, uh, it's still a very grey day, there's not a lot of uh, light difference from one part of the image to the other, so I rated uh, Tri-X 320, if I remember right, on 4x5, uh, and I rated it at uh, box speed of 320. I could have pushed it a bit, but it's uh, it's a studio film, it really doesn't like to be pushed, at least not in original, so with that one I'm careful and I stick to box speed of 400 at most. All right, I hope this was instructive to you guys. Um, I hope it makes sense. I'm not recording that thing a fifth time, so it is what it is. Uh, I think I'll do at least one more on black and white photography coming out soon, and then we'll move on to uh, different subjects. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you later. Cheers.